morning again. Can you hear me? I have a very bad cold, so I should not be taking care of my voice. Uh, let's just start off with a small prayer. You guys, uh, please pray and fix this place to one bright spot for India. Please, one spot where we strike the fire. I'm watching those games. Push me back to 20 years ago. Uh, 20 years ago, I was in a camp at Western Sea, Philippines. And I was the line judge for that game. So I had a court side view of every game that was going on. And that was what I was reliving for a single game. But one thing changed since then. When I was a line judge, there was no instant review. Okay, now that's like putting more pressure on the line judge when you put an instant review. That's how technology can disturb everything we do, and that was it. So, I want to talking about Olympics. Uh, here's a chart that I want you to uh, look at, and I want you to take a guess at what this chart is depicting. Okay, on the bottom you see. Those are the various Olympics, and the y-axis is the rank of the team. So, to give you a hint, we were to look for this year, the data is somewhere here, like this. So, can you take a guess what this is? This. Yes, this is uh, India's uh, gold medal spending. In hockey. Okay, so if you see this, from 1928 there was a streak, and then you see what happened. This is an anomaly because that 1980 Olympics, the entire Western bloc didn't go, so there was no competition. But otherwise, you can distinctly feel what has happened. So. Any idea what happened? Yes, technology changed the game. Right? There is disruption, and when we don't adopt to technology, this is what can happen. And India is trying to claw its way back. It's still some decades, and I don't see it. So, good morning, everyone. My name is Sumit Rao, and as I was introduced by Nareen. Yes, I do lead the engineering team from uh, Turner here. Uh, Turner, I'll talk a little about Turner later. But um, from when I was asked to do this talk, so this is a group of athletes uh, uh, in Fiji, and I talk about various technologies that they have. We have various engineering teams, each one of them picking their technology. And there was a word cloud we built out a couple of years ago when we were looking at what are these equipment. This is all over the place. Then they said, okay, how about building IT? What are we doing with intellectual property, especially in India, in the context of the global economy? I said, fantastic. That's the topic I would want to talk about. And then this came out just last week. Okay. It's. Uh, Everything about what I was thinking of talking. Only thing is, it's 451 pages. I don't see many people read it. But there's a chapter there about what's happening with innovation in India. And if you go back and read that, you see any parallels between what I'm saying today and what they are saying. I don't know who came up with the thought. It's all out there. Everything I'm sharing with you is a conversation about what we all are thinking about and what things could be done to foster more innovation in India. Okay? But it's a very good article. I mean, it's not an article, it's a big study. And let's see, it's, it's published by a professor in China. It's like my PhD student. A lot of appendix and uh, there's some good articles. The articles on India by Tata and Mahindra Foods is worth reading. Okay? So, when I started looking at what is happening 
in the context of innovation and just how how many of you have actually um, seen this um, two part series on civilization the west versus the west anyone at least can get to share something with you guys then so Niall Ferguson economist and journalist whatever you call him very controversial but it was a very good program he talked about why the west is the in civilization and he was explaining this to high school kids and he talked about six killer apps that basically helped the west beat the west and i, I want to start there so we will pivot from there to see what happened the six killer apps that the west had over the last 500 years that helped them one is competition when you start fostering competition you will definitely see that everyone trying to be better than the next one and again this is over 500 years not just 40 years you have looked at communism and capitalism it's much beyond this time so look at competition the second one is obviously the science the advance that the western science has done and what has happened there the third one was property and property rights, rights of an individual. And that's very relevant to us in the technology world. We talk about open source, about fostering more of the collaboration, but we also talk about patents and infringement privacy. So in our industry and rest of civilization, property rights play a big part and that's something we need to foster. The fourth killer app was medicine. When people started seeing medicine advance, everything else advanced with it. So, currently I work in the healthcare industry, but before that I was in banking and supply chain. And everywhere what I see is innovation drives a lot of what happens. And the, the most innovative companies eventually come out on top. I'll talk about a couple of examples of where we can do things incorrectly. But uh, the fourth killer app was the medicine. The fifth one was consumerism. We have to figure out what does the market need and what does the market consume, what makes sense in the market A that's not relevant in market B. So those are, that's the fifth killer app. The sixth one is my personal favorite and I can vouch for this. The sixth one is the work ethic. Now, I can look at brilliant people, I can look at societies that are very good, but eventually what trumps is the work ethic. And that's something that we are trying to instill in everything we do. And I, the reason I wanted to start with this is, you can see how others are doing, and we can see how we are doing. We see what's different. And when we start looking at differences, yeah, it doesn't look good. Uh, when I used to live in US, there was a term called manana. Okay, it will get home tomorrow. So here we look at why, like, take easy. So if you start looking at the work ethic, the quality comes in there. The attention to the detail comes in there. So many other things come in when you start focusing on the work ethic of the person. So starting with this kill, um, six app, we, I want to basically now look at programming. The first point I want to make is everything comes with, starts with an idea. Okay, we all have ideas. So when we talk about innovation, like I keep getting asked this question, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? I say, they can all be done. But what are the ideas that drive positive change? So there are many ideas. We're not going to change every single idea. But ideas that are driving the positive change that need. So it starts with that. So when you start looking at the ideas that drive positive change, um, 
I wanted to quiz again one more. In, if you look at this, it's a map of India, fuzzy map of India, but with a lot of dots. It was in the newspaper probably about six, nine months ago. Take a guess at what these dots mean. Actually, I should take more. It was more than a year ago. Illiteracy or lit literacy? Okay, it's a good guess. I think you're. It's needed in order to get through this. Take some more guesses. Electricity. So, I will give you three. Now, make the guess. So, this is actually a map published by Hugo more than a year ago, not six months, more than a year ago. And you guys are seeing how Uber is growing in the country. They published this saying, we are, we are only in 10 cities, the major cities in the country, but see where our app is being used. So, why are people using apps all over the country when it's only in those 10 cities that you can sort of move? They travel, but suppose you are a person from Bangalore going to one of those places, why are you opening Uber there? To check if there's a service there. So to me, that's a good idea that traveling with you, right? You want service there. Whether it's there or not, you want it. So when you see good ideas, the time has come. And now, you know, both Uber and Ola, they're going to all the small cities. But much before that, Uber was able to tell them, Center for services. So, how is Uber disrupting the room? But how much are people craving for Uber? So, that's what's happening today in terms of analytics. So, the big difference between now and probably 10, 20 years ago is without you telling anything, they know what you're doing. Uh, Around the same time that the Olympics was going on, there was a uh, news article. I, I still read my NPR news from my app. And the news article was how India is going gaga over some medal. Who told you? We are talking about it. How do you know? We always went gaga when the first medal or something happened or somebody came forth in the Olympics. They never knew what was being talked about here, but today because of Twitter, Facebook, WhatsApp and everything else, there's a lot of analytics behind it and everything can be tracked. And that's the key that we can take away when it comes to building applications that will work. So when you're thinking about what you want to build, look at these This is the second thing. <coughs> you would want to solve problems locally or look at what are the problems around you, solve for them. And when you're solving with them, start thinking about designing for the business. Take the example of Uber. They solve the problem somewhere and they're applying it across the world. Now, I don't think Uber has the advantage in India compared to Ola, Uber is losing a lot of money. It may still win the competition, but I think Uber will lose money in India just like they lost money in China. That doesn't matter. You still have to solve. When we are looking at how to innovate, um, we need to look at problems locally. And this is true even today in my company. We, we build EMR. That runs, we are the large EMR provider in the world. And we do not have a system because we do not have a civil So, when my engineers are building solutions, they are building solutions for the remote. And this is happening because everything we read, for example, this is something I see. We, whenever we read something, you read articles about something somewhere far away. So the problem is not so real for you. So this is a typical article and we start looking at this 
If I were to challenge you to go find obesity numbers in India, you will not. Actually, in this is just in the last one week, there were some numbers in the newspaper. But I'll I'll share with you. So we start with articles. We start with data that presents a problem somewhere else, and then we are trying to solve for that. Don't be extremely. So start looking for information of the local problem. So when I started looking at okay, what I started pivoting from the previous graph to so where what's the most reliable data I can get for healthcare? I had to go to World Health Organization, and then they started showing this is how uh, the density of doctors or nurses seeing across the world. Now, if you see, uh, U.S. and Canada is somewhere in the middle. The very few countries, mostly in Scandinavia, and they are known. Scandinavia is known for its health program. Others may say it's a socialist program, but it is based on data, one of the best in terms of what. Now, look at I mean, anything with black here means no data, no information. Black, there's no data. But India, Africa, China, we all in. So when we are looking at innovation in India, don't try to solve a problem that someone in the U.S. is solving. Because conditions are different, they will come with different perspectives. So I can go back to my my first job. We had a product in supply chain brand. Fantastic, everybody loved it. And then we said, let's take this. It was working in the U.S. Push it to all over the world. It did work in some of the other white countries there, like Japan, Korea, China. But it stopped there. It did not go to China. India, some of the marquee companies bought it. No one else bought it. Why? It's because it didn't understand that 80% of the population. Think differently compared to the top 20%. So we always look at anything that's being manufactured or designed in the U.S. is going to cater to the white population because that's the problem statement. Anything that's being designed in India, you can easily transfer it to some of the other emerging markets. But each market is going to be different. But where we go to? See, I was telling. You don't see phone companies like AT and T in Africa. You see a phone company like Airtel in Africa, because Airtel figured out how to take this risky place, or in the U.S. term is nickel and dime it in Africa. Okay, that's what Airtel figured it out. But AT and T used to sign this big fat package. I'll do with you for two years. You just take my money. That's not a model that works in countries like this. So start looking at how these things happen. And the third one I would say is uh, <coughs> create healthier stories. Now this is something that I'm, I won't say shamelessly. I'm proud to copy it from my company. So this was a branding that uh, my company picked for this year, where we we are in the healthcare uh, industry. We want to create healthier stories because we want people to get better. And the way I am sort of co-opting this is, if I were to look at my own organization in India, we are competing with several other global development countries. So I want to be able to tell the positive stories that are coming out of India and my organization. So if I have to tell the positive stories, I have to create the positive. And any you like, how many of you are visiting India for the first time? Just give me one hand. Okay. So I ask this question of everyone that visiting India for the first time: What are your first impressions? Okay. We are last to leave. But when I ask that question to others, like, what's your first impression? You see how much it changes. What we hear outside is one thing. What is happening inside is. And 
if we can tell the positive stories, then the power of positive reinforcement is tremendous. People will start looking at you. So, start looking at you different. Like, we have a great appreciation for the technology innovation that's happening in the world. Okay? Now, if all you hear about Israel is all the conflict that's happening between uh, Palestinians and Jews, you are going to have a very different opinion of the technological problem. You, when you hear what they're doing and see what they're doing, you look at it. If you go to places like Taiwan, Singapore, Singapore not as much as Taiwan, but Taiwan, South Korea, they, if you look at their journey in the last years, which is the same journey of 70 years now, India and then, the amount of advances they made is mind-boggling and part of what's happening for us is to say no it could not be done this is too big a country even now the chinese uh, uh, vice premier is in india they're discussing how we can copy some of the singapore model i don't think we need to co copy the singapore model we need to go back to the six million apps i talked about bring in some of those things to our dna and start building them. okay <clears throat> Here's a positive story I was looking at. Um, we were looking at, this is again in the healthcare industry, what has changed over 10 years. On the left is 2005, on the right is 2015. Okay, this data was published by the Indian Research. It's a show of hands, how many of you trust, trust the data? One, two, six, minority. That's one thing that has to change. I showed you World Health Organization, I didn't ask you that. I will show you US data, I don't ask if you trust it or not. But I'll show you Indian government data, so do you trust it? We do. I think that's one thing we need to change. So we are slowly getting into this space. I think there is, if you talk about open source or if you talk about private enterprises, we can build that competency and get reliable data to say things are actually improving. So in 2005, there was no Telangana, but otherwise, if you see the data now, the reds are becoming the white, and the whites are becoming green. So that says we are slowly making that mark, but that 10 years has been different. Things have moved much faster. So we do see some of the impetus, and I would say the next 10 years is going to be much faster, just based on the programs that the government is running, the current one, the private enterprises that have taken over the I will do, they're being called to do this. And the third part of it is the talk about the demographics. There is good number of people in the private industry that are thinking of the number of startups that are coming up, what we are trying to do in terms of addressing the problems here is just talking to my kids they have some of the things that they are working here it's while I am working for a multinational company our focus is on what the company is doing most of what we are trying to do is what can we do to get into the emerging markets we are taking all the solutions we have and sort of customizing or transforming it in order to enter the Indian we cannot use the same thing, but we can use that as a platform and make it more like the hair salon market, consumable by people who are working in rural health centers like us. Okay, so <coughs> one final uh, data point. Again, something that was in the news in the last few. Anyone recognize this gentleman? No. Okay. Um, news article that came out with him is the person with the largest negative carbon footprint. Okay. Jayant Balika is the name. He was the, um, he was recently in India, I don't know if you see here, but his claim to fame is he, he was the inventor and the creator of the IGBT transistor. It's the transistor that's driving the CFL bulb. And with the number of CFL bulbs that have come out, 
is responsible for the largest reduction in power usage. This part of uh, the EEC, the research, and uh, so this is something I picked up from the same news article, and uh, that sort of ties into the three points I was talking about. It's not about technology; it's about the application of the technology. I know I'm talking to a bunch of technologists, but how is it being applied? That's the most important. Okay, it's about marketing success, and <clears throat> we can build the best app, but if it's not marketed, some lousy app will come out. Uh, this was my biggest problem and or challenge that I faced in my first job. We had a very good product, and it was best in class. Anyone that wanted a desktop PC would buy it. When I was part of marketing, uh, I would go and we talk about it. Everything is good, but we will buy one of these or pay for it. Do this for us. Do you know what you're buying from them? It doesn't matter. They're searching for it. So if it's not marketed, it is worth searching. The second best, the third best will be in it. So marketing is one thing. And getting it to the market quickly. It's like, as I said, good ideas. Yes, you had the ideas. Somebody else had it. Don't think about it. You have to look at how you're advancing your ideas, which is why I am a big believer in forums like this, collaborations, hackathons, because I may not have all the answers, but if I get into a room like this, we brainstorm, we come up with the best problem. And we need to get into the market quickly. It's happening, and that's the biggest advantage that you see in places like these and that. A lot of lousy ideas come out from there too, but the good ideas travel faster. And that's what I would say. Thank you. Okay. Now, how do we do this? Creating on it. Okay. This is a quote that I so I attributed it to Mother Teresa. It could be a place like India. We have enough manpower in India to go and do this. Okay. So I wanted to basically close it with the what strength the um, example of the astroturf in uh, hockey. There will always be changes, there will always be competition that will come to things like us, and we need to be able to anticipate those. And that's what some of us are spending our time anticipating what the next is. And <clears throat> what we would do is one problem at a time, I think we were talking like four agile, there's one more thing I said. Just do one thing instead of trying to do ten things, and let different people attack different problems. We all do one thing. Okay. I'll finally leave it with this. Given that we have this discussion back to work calls, the choice of technology is not as important as how you wield it. Like this is every block of stone has a statue within it. And you, as the sculptor, pick the right tool to express it. So when you are expressing the best, your technology will get the credit it deserves. So that's what you, as the person wielding the technology, are a lot more important than the technology itself. With that, I thank you guys for the time. And if you have any questions, I'm out here. <clears throat> Good question. Okay.
I don't know if that's what uh, you intended, but I, I can think of the academic competition. Getting into the schools and colleges um, is where this is a lot of competition. And uh, actually, uh, I have been a product of the same industry. Um, I would say I probably was at the peak of my academic pursuit before I got into my undergrad. And I had never competed as much after that. So you are 100% right. We are making it very easy after people get into college. The thing that we need to now make is the reward system for what you're doing in the industry is going to change. It hasn't started, but in the next three to five years, um, you will start seeing the reward system change. Um, you hear about companies that are changing their performance appraisals. Um, that's probably a beginning, but you also hear the phrase sharing economy. Okay, the sharing economy is where ownership becomes a big deal. Everything that we are doing in our workplace is to reward execution. If you do this, this is the reward. If you do this a little more, this is the reward but everything is spoon fed. What's changing now is the sharing economy will become big in the next five to 10 years where you are an expert at something or you have a skill, go apply to something, do it in the best possible way in the shortest amount of time and move on. So that is where the world is going to move. And when you do that, people will pay a premium for doing the right thing in a certain point of time. So it may not be competition, it will be more of paying for quality. So I think that it will change. I don't know how quickly it will change, but I would see in the next five years us embracing that more. Today, all our incentives are about sustaining what's there. And I do talk about that as a bigger risk in India compared to other countries. The Indian civilization has been here for like 5,000 years by some reckoning. The mindset is about status quo. Don't disrupt it. The mindset is about don't react to these changing forces because they will all go and our life will continue. So that's the mindset. But that mindset has to change to in these changing forces, I want to be in control. I want to be able to drive that. So the comp I, I don't know if it's going to be competition in workplace. It would be looking at the best potential, getting the best potential out. I hope I answered your question. Okay. Any other question? Thank you very much.